on EA Sports. It's Sunday Night Football on EA Sports. Presented by EA Sports. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it. This crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Chicago Bears and the Houston Oilers. with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, you take a look at our home side as we enter play here. They come in losers of two straight, so they're trying to right the ship here a little bit. They're teetering a little bit, aren't they? And now things could really go south if they lose this game, so they understand the importance of playing well and stopping this streak. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Bears, they come in with some fresh legs as they got the week off last week thanks to the early season bye. And usually you hope your bye comes a little bit later in the year. But when you get a chance to get fresh legs back, you take that time and you run with it. And this will go as a touchback, and they will begin things at the 25. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. And they'll be led out by the guy under center, Charles, their quarterback. And what I loved about meeting with him before the game was talking to a guy who takes ownership of his performance. Two touchdowns, two interceptions last week, but all he focused on was the loss, okay? And he did say, if I change my stats a little bit, not necessarily for me to look better, but that'll help my team. Going right side here, and that's complete. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. 10 yards there to start the drive, and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. Now back to throw. Quick slant to Brown. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. Now the second down throw on target. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. Again, he'll drop to throw. That is incomplete. Defensively here, you're facing a top five team in terms of points scored in the NFL. So when they're that high power, you've got to find a way to hold them under 20. Because to me, that's the magic number. 20 points scored gives yourself your, you give yourself your best chance to win. So if they're up around 24, 28, 30, they could be in some trouble. And I think so, because then you turn it into a shootout. And that means your offense has to keep pace. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far in the opening drive. We always talk about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. He gets it to Brown, complete. And he'll be touched down here, but not before he does pick up the first. They'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. to throw now on first down. He's got Njoku, his big tight end. Heck of a broken tackle and able to work this down near the 23. A gain of six there on first. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Now here's a throw that's complete and brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the seven. Mark that as a gain of 16 to set him up first and goal. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And they're going to get him. 
They bring him down to the sack back at the 16-yard line. Oh, and after the sack, he's still down on the field. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. First down, a bit of a disaster, and now on second and goal, back even further. Now a first carry for Derrick Henry. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. Driven it down the field nicely here on the opening drive, but now it's put up or shut up. No doubt about it, because to make that type of a drive and ultimately kick a field goal would feel very disappointing. But I'm just wondering, is the head coach thinking, is this four down, Terry? And got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Houston. From four yards out. And this offense takes the ball down the field and scores on their opening drive. This is a crew. They've come out flat their last two games, both losses. But just judging by the energy level, they look different here early, and that touchdown shows how. Yeah, it seems to me that that touchdown gets them off the treadmill. Because, you know, you, you've been on the treadmill. I've seen you work out. You go forever <laughs> and ever, and it tells you've gone somewhere. But you really have. You're in the same spot. They've exchanged it for an escalator. Still got some hills to climb, but they can get there. These are good analogies. I run outside sometimes, so get, get some fresh air. A little sun on your face. A little wind in there. Yeah, that's right. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Taken in at the three. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So here now the Bears offense for their first drive of the game. And leading them out there, we get a look at their 6-3 quarterback. And coming off of an early season open week. And in this situation, what he told us when we sat down with him was he spent a lot of time working on fundamentals, kind of getting back to basics during that time, as opposed to having to worry about healing up or resting up. It was too early in the season. Get back to the basics, get his game going again. This well up field across the 45. Okay. The tackle back. Well, I tell you what, when you get a running back who can move like that in the open field, that's something to take advantage of, and they certainly did there. And first and foremost, this is all about vision. He can see the play developing right in front of him, and once he's past the line of scrimmage and got a full head of steam behind him, He's just going to keep right on going. And the final readout, by the way, on the next-gen stats. I mean, goodness, he hit a top speed of 22.2 miles per hour. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. And he goes across midfield and down into Houston territory. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. A gain of four. It's now second and six. That'll be incomplete. Darnell Mooney, the target there. And now it's third down. It's third down. And six yards to go. Now an option play, and he'll keep it. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. A big time gain there on the keeper, using his legs to hurt him. First down. And this, I mean, it's certainly something to watch out for. He is not afraid to call his own number on plays like that. And here he takes it for good yardage. And we know this defense prepared all week for this, but sometimes when you see it in person, it's a whole different ball game. And all that preparation, it goes right out the window. In any event, it happened pretty quickly. I'm not sure he made the right decision on that one. I think if he had it to do over again, he would have found a different target downfield. But he made his decision, and that one's incomplete. Eluding the pressure right. Now he'll pull it down. He'll have a first down inside the 10. The escapability in evidence there is that one good for 15 and a first. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier on this drive. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened. Do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you have to start thinking about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure someone is there waiting for him to take off. And that'll move him a little 
closer as he takes it from the seven down to the four yard line. And Brad, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you want bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage back at the six. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. On third and goal, they're going to run the option. Here's a quick throw out left. It's complete. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. A great play there. His second touchdown on the season. And the Bears are an extra point away from tying the football game. CD, it seemed like they were so focused on the guys out wide, they forgot about him out of the backfield. That's a really good point because you've got to communicate, and oftentimes when you start counting receivers, that's exactly what you do. You start from the widest receiver, work your way inside. Who gets lost sometimes? The back in the backfield. That's exactly what happened there. And he got into the end zone. Chris Boswell set to kick off. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. Taken in the end zone. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. At their own 25 yard so now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. And they'll be looking to build off of a nice drive last time. A drive that really relied on the quarterback. Making good decisions, distributing the ball well, distributing it accurately, keep, keeping it away from danger. A really nicely run drive. But now the defense, what adjustments do they need to make in the passing game? Pass rush, pass rush, pass rush. Whether it's the guys up front, or maybe you bring additional guys, but you've got to disrupt the timing of them throwing the yeah, football. We'll see if they can disrupt it here. Second and six. He's got his man on the out route. And he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. I know this may be jumping the gun a little bit, but 7-7, seven to seven, they're flinging it around like crazy. Look at the drive that's going on here. Partner, we may have to start thinking about one of these defenses just holding someone to a field goal and maybe trying to get advantage that way. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. It's a gain of five, and it's a second down. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. And they'll try the jet sweep here. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Well, we've seen running backs in today's NFL get involved in the passing game. Maybe it's about time more receivers like that get involved in the running game. And that is something we are seeing more and more in this league, no question about it. That wasn't the biggest of gains. That was enough to get them a first down. And it continues to test the defense. They have to think on every play about who might end up with the ball. down carry for Henry. And he takes it down to the 40 with a pickup of four. Brad, in all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Now a throw here going to be taken in by the tight end to Joku. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears 28. 12 yards there as they move the chains. They'll run on first down. It's Henry, and he'll get about four as he's brought down at the 24. Well, at the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to help feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal... Shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. Derrick Henry. His third touchdown now on the year. And his guys have taken the lead. 
I thought as that was developing that he might actually keep it, but the right decision, obviously, to hand the football off. And some teams do a really nice job of taking a little bit longer at the mesh point, meaning where he's going to hand it off or keep it. Sometimes they ride it maybe a step longer than others. That allows him to make the proper decision and have the right person end up with the ball. And it paid off with a long touchdown run. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Taking it about the one. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. At their own 28-yard line. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. And now last drive so successful with the ground game, ending in a touchdown. Do you stick with that formula? That would be the number one thing you would think of, but so many guys now would look at it and say, we've got them set up so well for play action, now's the time to take a shot. Yeah. But you know, there was a big time coach in the state of Ohio who once said, <laughs> if you throw the ball, if you put it in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. <laughs> that he would have kissed it on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. It'll be back at the 36. But despite the completion, they're going to wind up losing three there. Second down. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. This time for Smith, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Sidney Jones. And to the 40-yard yeah, yeah, line, yeah, that's where the return right. stops. No. He's at it again, Charles. He had the pick six last week. Not a pick six here, but an interception. Yeah, it's another Oski, because that's the word we use when we intercept the pass. Oski tells your team to rally around and block for him. And that worked really well last week because he had made it all the way to the end zone. This week, he got the Oski. Maybe not a touchdown, but boy, he's playing really well. there now as he's on to punt for the first time tonight now last week in the loss five punts as he gets this one away fielded at the 33 39 yard punt six yards on the return and the Bears take over the Bears now ready to take over again and a methodical drive last time but they couldn't get that knockout blow they had to settle for three but you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side. Maybe a little gas, Yeah, right? a little tired. And if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting upfield only giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. That'll be marked as a 27-yard pickup. First down. Flush to his right. And that will be incomplete with a clock down now to 13 seconds. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Incomplete, and we're down to eight seconds now. The intended receiver there was John o. Smith, but now it'll be third down. So now third and 10, a big play to start the drive, but nothing since to throw again and this will be caught by Mooney now whistles in a timeout with three seconds left in the first half so three seconds here remain in the half on as the field goal unit to see about getting three points made his first this now from 46 yards away and the former Rice Al Boswell puts this one through in his return to Houston so a very tight first half. We had to break in a one-point game. As we send you on over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. We'll get back to you and Charles in a minute. But first, time to give the folks at home a look at what's going on around the NFL. We'll start up at MetLife Stadium in New Jersey, where it was the visiting Ravens who were able to come in and take this one on the road. 
28-17, your final score. From there, let's head off and check out a second game. And they were winners in that one over the visiting Pittsburgh Steelers. 38-0. Whoa! That's your final? And then finally, we wrap up the week with a good one on Monday Night Football between the Miami Dolphins and what equates to be a very tough opponent. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back-and-forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. number was right around 20 and the offense has been the issue you're right first and 10 at the 47 yard line on first down Henry and very little running room there he did get a couple up to the 49 I'm sure that that's going to be the formula just keep the ball on the ground keep that clock moving and when you have the lead this late in the game Above all, stay in bounds. Yes, take care of the football. Yes, gain yardage, but stay in bounds and let that clock tick. And he takes this thing way down into Chicago territory. Well, they held him pretty well in check, but if you recall back in the first quarter, he said they needed to avoid the big play. He finally gets loose. And the thing about it, it doesn't have to be a bunch of big plays. Sometimes one big play can be enough. That's why it's tough to deal with a guy like that. So a big play as it gets him all the way down to the 20 now for first and 10. They'll run on first down. It's Henry. And he's going to get this one down inside the 15. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Nine-yard pickup brings up second and three. They'll run the jet sweep with Brown. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. A five-yard gain, and now they're set up first and goal. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. They'll try and run for it with Henry. And he'll take this from the 9 down to about the 7. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle. Keep coming after them. Put the pressure on them. And a little bit of space there. Takes it inside the five to the three. That gives him 98 yards in this game. And he's got to feel pretty good about that. But the entire offense does. The big thing, though, Brandon, they've got to get to 100, though. You think he knows he's at 98? I think someone has told him. By and got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Houston. David Njoku with touchdown number eight on the year. And his guys are going to add on to their lead. You get down near the goal line, this is where having a sure-handed tight end becomes a luxury. And it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run. He finds himself open for an easy touchdown. Point after, right down the middle. And that pushes the lead up to 11. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This will be fielded inside the five. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Here's over first and 10 at their own 24-yard line. 
The Bears offense now gets set to head back onto the field. And you figure after giving up that last touchdown, you know, they trail by two scores here in the fourth quarter. This drive becomes very critical. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And he slings one that's incomplete. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. On second down, here's a keeper by the QB. Now they can't bring him down. And yeah, they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And yeah, now it looks like we're going to get a timeout here. We've got a man shaken up. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple, and it's second down. A place like that, Charles, no doubt, they're just going to continue to fuel this crowd. And this defense is already playing well, but it also feeds on the energy of that crowd that you're talking about, and that takes them up to another level. Right now, they're playing really loose. They've got the lead, and what a nice stop they just made there behind the line of scrimmage. The Bears on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and eight. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. Mark that down as a pickup of 13, and the Bears have the first. Escaping the pressure right. And I think the ball's out, but this will get out of bounds, so possession will stay the same. He'll get just a yard on the scramble. It's second down. Can almost see inside his face mask there, the look of relief. He coughed it up, but it goes out of bounds. They keep it. Someone carrying around a lucky horseshoe, aren't they? If I were him, I'd go out and play the lottery after that one. A very fortunate man. And they're operating in plus territory here. They're thinking points. Definitely don't want to lose the football at this juncture. 15 yards on the play, first down. But correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit bring to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Chewing up big yardage, another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. Late in the game, defense trying to avoid a big play. He's able to work out of the passing game, turn it into a run, pick up the first and stop the clock as well. And you know in this situation. And he will score. Touchdown, Chicago. It's their quarterback. His second touchdown of the game and his ninth on the year. And the Bears have cut it to within a score. Well, I'd have to say that for him, that was an all-encompassing drive because it was his arm that got his team down to that point, but his legs that finished the deal. Give him credit for making it happen. And this is caught. They got it. And that could be an important two points. It gets him back within a field goal. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Taken about seven yards deep. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. At their own now comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. After the touchdown we just saw, we have a brand new ball game. And now look at the situation. You've got plenty of time on the clock. Defensively, they have three timeouts. So do you run the football here or do you throw it? I think you have that full conversation with your offensive unit. And you tell them, here's the situation. They've got all their timeouts, so we are not going to play this conservatively. We've got to attack them. We've got to make them use those, gain the ground that we need in order to put this game away. If you think we're just going to run it three times and punt it, you got another thing coming. Yeah, I mean, by the way, also the two-minute warning in place, so essentially four timeouts left. They have to be aggressive here. Again, it's Henry. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. He was trying to get it to A.J. Brown that time, but it's going to be second down. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, 
And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they're going to have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, they're going to have to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Got a man and he hits him in stride. And they stop him up short of the first down as they get him at about the 43. And now defensively they're going to burn their first time out. Remember they get an extra time built in coming up here shortly at the two minute warning. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. And a nice special teams job here. This is going to be down inside the 10 at the 7-yard line. Well, someone's going to be happy with that effort. You know who else is going to be happy? His defense. Absolutely. <laughs> He's created a very long field for that offense to try to traverse. And he got some help from Mr. Football there. Checking up nicely. Good English on that punt. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. And he's able to get this one up to the eight-yard line this time. A good rally to the football. Keeps him to only a yard, and it's second down. At the eight-yard line. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off at the 21. And they're going to take over right there at the 22-yard line. When you talk about making winning plays, that is a winning play at this stage of the game to come up with that interception, huge. I like how you identified that because most people think winning plays are the offense trying to get it done. In this case, nursing a lead, they found a way to make a play on that side of the ball and maybe finish things off. 20th carry now for Derrick Henry. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and 10. They'll run it again with Henry. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Now the Bears will use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. On third down, he'll drop to throw. And that will be incomplete. Well, that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Hey, instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. And on third down, they said, forget about the sticks. We want six. And his kick is good. And that will double their lead as it's up to six. Oilers 27, Bears. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, it's a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. Uh, a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden, they're down. 22-yard line. So now the Bears, down by six, 90 seconds remaining. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. He's back to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 15 yards on the play, first down. Obviously a big first down right there. Yeah, they still got to hustle. They got to get up to the line of scrimmage and get set. But I don't think necessarily you need to spike it, but they've got to continue to move quickly. 
After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Back to throw. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Jonu Smith, the tight end, is intended receiver. And it's third down. Incomplete. They'll probably spend a little extra time dissecting the game film after this one. I think the part of their plan was to hit him over the top of the deep ball. They've been unsuccessful all night. So down six, and they know they need this one on fourth down. Back to throw. And no, it's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the ball will go over on downs on the short side of the field fourth down and they take to the air which really isn't a major surprise but how about the coverage they're able to bat it down Houston set to take over and with the defense out of timeouts powerless to stop the clock this should just be a couple of kneel downs victory very much in sight now as they'll take a knee should just about do it. So Houston going to come away here with the victory. And it wasn't really always pretty. They had their bumps and bruises. Really, both sides did. But they did what they needed to do at home to get the win. Yeah, they really had to grind this one out, didn't they? Because nothing came easy. Every snap was a major league brawl. They had to win at the line of scrimmage, win downfield. They got all those things accomplished. But to win a close one like this, you know, every team wants to be physical. We've heard that a million times, right? Those who are mentally tough, those are the teams that you have to deal with in the playoffs. This was that type of a game. So for the home team here, they climb back to 500 now at three up and three down. And they'll get to stay put for a few days as they'll host the Houston Texans next week. Meanwhile, for Chicago, they'll fall to one and four with a loss. And they'll be off to Minneapolis next week for a look at new U.S. Bank Stadium and a date with the Vikings. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, we thank our entire crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. This is the NFL on EA Sports.